Hi guys, this is Sam, your cat's nutritionist, and today we are taking a closer look at one of the most controversial ingredients in pet food, and that is carrageenan. You have probably seen the warnings, it causes cancer or it's inflammatory, especially if you have been researching wet cat food, but is that actually true? Is carrageenan harmful to your cat or is the internet getting a little bit carried away? Let's break it all down with facts and not fear. And just as a reminder, I am an independent nutritionist. That means that I'm not beholden to anyone and I can just give you my unfiltered opinion. Now, let's start with the basics. What is carrageenan? Well, it is a thickener and gelling agent extracted from red seaweed and it has been used in human and animal pet food for absolute decades. In cat food, actually, it helps give that jelly-like texture to patties and stews and some of the cat soups that are on the market. It's cheap, it's effective, and it helps stabilize the product so it holds its shape and doesn't separate. There are two types of carrageenan. One is food grade carrageenan, also called oven degraded, and the second one is degraded carrageenan, and this is also known as polygenin. Now, it's very, very important for you to understand that only the food grade version is used in pet food, but here's where things get confusing. Much of the fear actually comes from studies on polygenin, which is not approved for food use. Polygenin is made by treating carrageenan with acid and heat, and that version has been shown to cause inflammation and even promote tumors but only in high doses in animals. And again, it's not what's used in cat food. And by the way, I'll be giving you my unfiltered opinion on whether you should be actually be feeding carrageenan to your cat, but that'll be at the end of the video. So anyway, why the panic? Some researchers worry that undegraded carrageenan might break, might break into polygenin inside the body especially in the acidic environment of the stomach. And if you think of a cat's stomach, it's very, very acidic because they are obligate carnivores. So their stomach acid is actually quite potent. However, this hasn't actually been proven in animals and the studies are mixed at best. There's actually one 2001 study in guinea pigs found possible inflammatory diets, but other reviews, including a 2018 European Food Safety Authority, concluded that carrageenan is not genotoxic or carcinogenic when used as intended. Whenever you have a controversial ingredient it's universally used in pet food and by some of the biggest companies, some of those very, very big companies aren't going to be incentivized to produce potential research papers that might go against the very ingredient they are trying to put in the food. So that's also something that you should take into account. Most board certified vets and nutritionists currently consider food grade carrageenan to be okay, to be safe. Although some say you should avoid it altogether because a lot of cats prone to GI issues or IBD issues might struggle with it. Now that's not the same as saying that it's dangerous. It just means there's enough uncertainty there that cautious people may prefer to steer clear, especially since some cats tend to have very sensitive stomachs. Now, should you avoid carrageenan? Well, in my own experience, I do not give my cat anything with carrageenan. And why is that? That is because a lot of the foods that contain this very additive, this very ingredient, as the same companies that add wheat gluten, rice, barley, corn protein meal, and unspecific meats like poultry byproducts or meat and animal derivatives, or even sugar or sugar derivatives such as sorbitol and caramelized sugar. So it is just another ingredient that flares up that I don't really like. And I don't like it, not because of the carrageenan itself, because yes, it might be safe, it might be okay. It is because it is used in a lot of the low quality pet foods, in my opinion, that over 
obligate carnivores such as our cats would never touch in the wild. So if your cat is healthy and thriving on a food that happens to contain carrageenan, I don't believe there's strong evidence to panic or switch just for this one ingredient. What I would do if I were you would turn that bag of food over and check whether you are happy with those ingredients and whether those ingredients are species appropriate and appropriate for your cat. But if your cat suffers from digestive issues, chronic vomiting, diarrhea, IBD, IBS, pancreatitis, diabetes, etc., etc., you are much better off steering away from foods with carrageenan, from wheat gluten, barley, corn, soy, that sort of thing. Because those aren't ingredients, they are not foods that you should be feeding an obligate carnivore. And so over time, those are only going to create more and more problems. Now I do raw feed my cat, meaning that he doesn't get any starches. He gets no carbohydrates whatsoever. I am very fortunate. I am very, very lucky that he is a stray and he has always been a very, very hungry little kitten. And so he has always taken to raw food very, very well. And that raw food doesn't contain any additives or any preservatives. If he doesn't eat it on the morning, tomorrow or in a couple of days, it's going to rot and it's not going to be very nice. But it is as biologically appropriate as possible. And by the way, if you want to feed your cat better, you should consider downloading our guide how to feed your cat for optimum health is absolutely jam-packed of good information that will tell you what to look up for, what to avoid, and it's an absolute game changer. It will change the way you see cat food and your cat is going to be a lot better off health-wise. So I will leave it down below, how to feed your cat for optimum health. Now, if your cat's food is a kibble or a wet food and it contains a lot of those ingredients, you should maybe try to carry them over and switch them over onto a bit of a better food, something a bit more species appropriate. And some of those foods will say things like carrageenan free or no gums or thickeners, like guar gum, for example, which is a polysaccharide, is a sugar derivative, or things that will say single source protein and minimal ingredients. And that's what you want to strive for. You want to try to mimic, you want to try to replicate what your cat would eat in the wild, AKA small prey. So keep in mind that removing carrageenan doesn't make a bad food good. You must focus on species appropriate nutrition, high meat content, low if any carbohydrate, and definitely no added sugars, which is the biggest pet peeve I've got. And then you can worry about things like thickeners. Now, what is my recommendation? I personally aim to recommend carrageenan free options wherever possible. Not because it's definitely harmful, but because we have alternatives that give peace of mind and that are just simply better, they are just much better options. I also look at the bigger picture. Is this food biologically appropriate for your cat or is it not? Is it high in meat? Is it low in fillers? Or is it packed with fillers and is it packed with corn gluten meal and it's got sugar to make it more highly palatable and caloric dense so your cat can get the calories in? So let me know what you think. Do you feed carrageenan to your cat? Did you know this was a potential bad ingredient or controversial? ingredient or do you not care? Do you just like pick up a bag of food and you just give your cat whatever they want to eat? Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.